as the story of ancient Israel unfolds, we come to this point where Jacob, who was the son of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham, has his name changed. You know, it's an interesting thing, but he has this encounter as he's preparing to enter back into the land of Canaan. He had left because, actually, he had cheated his brother out of his inheritance. <laughs> his older brother was bigger and really, really angry. And so Jacob ran away. I mean, didn't stand and fight. He ran away. You know, and somehow when he went back to the land of the Chaldeans, he learned a few things along the way. And he came back a different man. He was not the same one who cheated his brother, who was a coward. He comes back now. He's wealthy. He has a large family. You know, he has 12 sons, not to mention his daughters and all the rest of his retinue. You know, but he's not the same man, and it's not the wealth that's done that. He realizes what he has done, and he comes back to make peace with his brother. He comes back to settle in the land that God had promised to them. And he has this crazy dream, this experience where all through the night he wrestles with this person. And at the end, we find out that when he gives Jacob a new name, who this person was. The new name is Israel, which means I have wrestled with the Lord. So the one he wrestled with through the night was God. And I think about that. I, I remember back in freshman year of college, Old Testament 101, when the professor was going through and we were studying the Old Testament. And of course, we got to this story. And he gave us the translation of the name Israel. And it really struck me. And I thought, you know, that's my name. And in fact, I remember writing in my journal that night, my name is Israel. Because I think that's not an uncommon thing. Certainly there are those people who are blessed all through their life, who have this great relationship with God. But I'm going to say, that's not my experience, nor is it the experience of many people, at least from those I've talked to over the years. You know, it's trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do, what God wants of me, you know. And there is this ongoing struggle with God that takes place again and again. You know, we come to those moments in life that might be a moment of loss. And the question is, what do we do? You know, do I trust God in this moment? Do I rely on God? Uh, I'm not real happy with what God has done. You know, that somehow, why didn't you save this person? I prayed for that to happen. Now we wrestle with the Lord. We struggle with the Lord all the time. It's an ongoing reality, at least for me. And I've learned to give up a little easier, a little quicker. But there are still those moments in life. And we kind of see that we have these people who are wrestling with who Jesus is. You know, Jesus cures this man who's possessed by a demon. He can't speak. He can't hear. And, and it's this wonderful thing. And, and they say, wow, this is great. But some say, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, uh. It's by the power of demons this happens. You know, we don't know how to take this guy. We don't know if God is there. We're going to use our own way of thinking, not ask, what does God think? It is that constant issue. And, you know, it is that struggle that all people have. I don't think it's just those who were then that crowd that day who were sheep without a shepherd. I think that's true of human beings, human beings in general. You know, we don't know exactly what we should do, how we should live our life, how we should and when we should surrender to the Lord. And when it's, the Lord wants us to do something instead, you know, it's that ongoing question. And it's OK. It's OK. Faith is a journey. And it's something we're called to grow in. 
We grow in it through the twists and the turns of life. We come to put our faith, our hope in God. And hopefully along the way, we have those experiences where we know that God was with us. Even though it didn't seem like it at the moment, God was there. God brought me through that once more. <laughs> it's one of my jokes is, is that, you know, Lord, I know you were with me the last 17,632 times, but this is different now. And it's not. It's never different. God is always there to be with us, to walk with us. Of all the things that the story of Jesus has said to me over the years, the thing that I value most is that the Lord became one of us to walk with us through life so that in the end, he will lead us into the promised land of heaven. Maybe that's why Matthew is so fond of presenting Jesus as that new Moses, the one who goes up on the mountain and brings to us God's law, God's life, God's love. I don't know. But in any case, the reality is, is that the reason he came was to lead us to home. And so we rely on him no matter what storms may shake our life.